Welcome back to How to Be a Better DM, the official podcast of Monsters.Rent. I'm Justin Lewis. And I'm Tanner Wayland. And we are here to help you tell better stories for yourself and your players as you dungeon master sessions of D&D, Dungeons and Dragons. We'd like to give you some quick announcements. We actually have one before the show. And then after the show, if you want to stick around, we have some more announcements then as well. Uh, but first, let's talk about this. Tired of being alone? Are you tired of not having any of your players understand you? Are you tired of never truly belonging? Well, you're in luck. All you need to do is join the Guild. The Guild is a unique and exclusive experience that is only open to Dungeon Masters. It is a full community focused on helping ease your DMing burdens. Want to meet other DMs? Join the Guild. Want to discuss your homebrew ideas with people who would appreciate it instead of just telling your cat? Join the guild! Want to find a place where all your wildest dreams will come true? Join the guild! Go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free. Wait, that can't be right. Chuck, Chuck, can you check this again? Is this supposed to be... What? Oh, it's... They're serious? It's free? Oh. Okay, all right. Yes, go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free, even though they are crazy for giving this away for free. Common side effects may include burping, sneezing, laughing, breathing, hearing, listening, tasting, farting, critting, sarcasm, and in extreme cases, explosive diarrhea. Awesome. With that out of the way, we can get into today's show. The metal man cries out in pain. You and your party walk into the Baron's great hall and you see the mechanical man bound by chains. He hangs from a nearby wall. A large thug stands near the automaton with a cudgel, beating him leisurely. You and your party walk forward past the courtiers and the sycophants to address the Baron. He sits on a large chair near a great hearth, tearing hunks of meat off of a leg of lamb and stuffing it into his face. You surreptitiously gr glance around the room. Ten guards. You and your friends stand before the Baron. He chews, swallows, and then smiles. Ah, the adventuring party from Guildhaven. We finally meet face to face. Please, sit, eat. I'm pleased that you grace my court with your presence, he says, and he gestures to tables filled with food. You glance at your party members and clear your throat. <clears> throat> uh, I don't think we have time for festivities. The Baron steeples his hands. You're here for the reward then. Capture of this monstrosity would not have been possible without your very capable help. <laughs> I believe it was uh, 2,000 gold. He tosses a large sack of gold onto the ground in front of him. Some of the coins spill out onto the marble floor. You eye the gold. Baron, my friends and I have spent a great deal of time with this monstrosity, as you call him. He saved our lives. We did not mean for him to be captured. We believe you keep him here illegally. We demand you set him free. Your voice echoes around the great hall as every pair of eyes turns towards you. Your eyes dart towards the metal man. Though inhuman, his eyes look at you almost as if to say, Thank you but your efforts are in vain. You turn your attention to the Baron. The Baron stands up. You dare come into my domain and make demands of me? You've served me well in the past. For that, I give you one chance. One chance alone to walk away and leave. You stand there, gripping your sword hilt. The entire room feels the tension. What do you do? Welcome back to the fifth episode of How to Be a Better DM. I'm here to help you tell better stories for yourself and your friends as you dungeon master a session of Dungeons & Dragons 5. Before we get into it, another shout out to the guy who makes this audio sound so cool. I'm talking about at Kahootas, K-A-H-O-O-T-A-Z from Instagram. He's done an excellent job of mastering the audio, adding in sound effects, 
And if you need any audio help, reach out to him and he'll get you taken care of. He's awesome. He's a delight to work with. So again, that's at Kahootaz, K-A-H-O-O-T-A-Z on Instagram, and he will help you out. Now, let's talk about doing something every DM has to deal with, shy or reserved players. That's right. Let's talk about getting people out of their shells. So let's get into it. Number one, first thing you should try and do is ask them more questions. During your session, if one player generally doesn't say much as far as role-playing goes, then the simplest way to get them to say something is to ask them. Ask them a question. Ask their player a question. Say, for example, the group decides to do something. They decide to enter a specific cave, but the quiet player hasn't given their input. Simply ask, what does Lily Leaf Twinkletoes do? And obviously that name is made up, but you get the idea. Ask them questions. And this will shut everyone else up, but it'll also give them space and a chance to say what they're thinking with very little repercussions because in many cases the decision has already been made. Number two is ask them backstory questions in between sessions. These players might just be afraid of letting loose, so just to help them along by getting them to think up really cool things about their characters is a great way to pull them out of their shell. I found that when you do this, you might only get you know one little tidbit here, but even that can start the process of helping the character and the player feel more comfortable and get into the game. It it gives them ownership of the game when they create something for it. Number three is to make a section of the game about them. This is easier when they give you, obviously, some tidbit of backstory information. But um, and, and on this one, you got to be careful too, because if you add, you know, too much and you make it too much about them, they might get even more shy. They might get more reserved. But if you add that little tidbit your quiet player came up with into the game, either small or, or big tidbit, however big they, they talk about, and however big you want to make it, it can go a long way to help the player immerse themselves in the game. I found that when I do this, the player gets excited and they don't feel so self-conscious. That's a big key. Really make the player feel cool. And honestly, that's a, that's a pretty good life lesson in general. If you can make people feel cool or good about themselves in an honest and genuine way, not in a flattering or dishonest way, uh, you'll make lots of relationships and things will just be better off for you. But again, make sure you're honest and make sure it's real and genuine. And in this case, if you make the pl- player really care about their character and have fun with it and, and think, wow, that was such a cool thing that I came up with in part. They're going to enjoy it much more and they're going to let go of their inhibitions. Number four is you need to understand it takes little steps. Your player isn't going to go from reserved initiate to role-playing master in one game, maybe not even in one campaign, but just know that it's going to take time. And every session, they might come out of their shell a little bit more. And it's, it's so worth it when you do that little arc of the character and you have that kind of critical moment in the character's backstory uh, and, and they make this really cool decision and you see the player come alive. And that's that's really what D&D is all about. It's not about, not about the characters, it's about the players. And it's always important to remember that. Number five is you need to make the table a safe space. At my table, no one makes fun of anyone else. No one gets to critique the playing of any other player. Everyone gets to feel safe. I do not stand for anyone making the game less fun for anyone else. Now, obviously there's gonna be jabbing here and there, you know, like, oh, your mom, you know, that, that stuff's fine. But when it comes down to it, if everyone's not having fun, then something's wrong. And you need to take that into account. You need to fix it, honestly. At my table, everyone feels safe. That is, that is a rule. So number six, you need to come out of your shell. All the players look to you to set the tone of the game. If you are doing crazy things like funny voices <laughs> or interesting role-playing choices, then your players will feel more comfortable to do the same thing. Sometimes this means that you also have to let your vulnerability show with making things up. Maybe you don't have the whole campaign planned. Maybe they ask you a question and you don't really have the answer. This happened to me just in my campaign where uh, basically they're in a haunted mansion and everything they see, they have to look through a mirror in order to see it for real, right? And now they're they're shining these fragments of mirrors on everything and... I have to come up with crap on the spot when they're like, oh, what's in this room? I shine, you know, on, on this particular portrait. I, I, I look in the reflection of the mirror at this particular portrait and I have to think, okay, that's nothing or that's interesting. That's really cool. And sometimes you have to, you do have to just sit there and be like, I haven't thought of this up. Give me one second. Okay. And, and then you give them what they're, what they're looking for. You know, sometimes it's just nice to let them know that because the sooner everyone realizes that we're all just making crap up, the better. 
Now, number seven is reward your players. When your players attempt something really cool that is kind of a stretch, reward them. This happened in my campaign where the party was about to fight some undead soldiers when one of my players, who has a noble background, decided to recite the ancient credo of an ancient kingdom. And because it was really freaking cool and it was such a good idea, I decided to let the soldiers treat the players as fellow soldiers, basically skipping the entire encounter and salute them rather than fight them. And they walked away and it was a really cool moment. And I could see it, particularly for this one player, he had been having a really bad day. And I think, I think he really needed that. And that was, honestly, that was one of my favorite moments of the campaign and one of my favorite moments as a DM because that was collaborative storytelling at its best. So uh, to summarize them, number one, you need to ask them questions. Number two, you need to ask backstory questions in between sessions. Number three, make a section of the game just about them. Number four, understand that it's going to take little steps. Number five, make it a safe space. Number six, come out of your shell as a DM. And number seven, make sure to reward your players. So remember, your players look to you to help them feel comfortable. They look to you for this great experience that's called Dungeons and Dragons. And believe me, when all the players are really into the game, you know, they're really immersed, that's when the game is actually fun. That's when the magic happens. Pun intended. Thanks for listening to today's episode, guys. Make sure you follow the show so you never miss a single episode. If you have any questions, suggestions, or you just want to share some of your DMing experiences, reach out to me on Instagram at Geronimo Levis. I'd love to see and talk to you guys, uh, but we'll see you next time. Until then, let's roll initiative. Thank you for listening to today's show. Uh, we really appreciate your support and your patronage. We have a few more announcements to go over. Uh, first, did you ever fall in love with the library as a kid? It was a place where you could experience a thousand stories without having to buy a thousand books. That is what Monsters at Rent can do for your D&D campaign. You can rent and swap out as many quality miniature monsters and creatures for your D&D party as you could ever want without having to buy them. You can rescue villagers from a kobold camp or lead your party through the fighting forest or many more adventures. We're coming out with new bundles all the time. Just sign up for our subscription to get access to your own personal library of minis. Go to monsters.rent to find out more. That's the website, monsters with an S dot rent. Get your library pass to a world of minis today. We also wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Stardust and Dragons. I'm going to let one of the cast of Stardust and Dragons, Christian Hatcher, and his crew tell you a little bit more about it. This August, a new adventure podcast is coming to a platform near you, filled with action. You one of the two of them. We can't right. keep taking hits like that. Drama. Everything that she's been doing, everything she's going to do finally sets in. And Stardust. Help! Help! <coughs> Someone, please! Find out more about this epic odyssey at stardustanddragons.com, where adventure awaits in the stars. That's all the announcements we have today. Again, thank you so much for everything you do for us. You make this show possible. Like we said before, we'll be back next week with another great episode, and until then, let's go ahead and roll initiative.